خبر خوب برای دارندگان کیس اس آی وی پی 1 و پی 2 سلام عزیزان و همراهان گرامی وقتتان بخیر امید که جور صحتمند لباس عافیت بر تن داشته باشید جاوید شیرزاد هستم از کیون میدیا هموطنان عزیز وزارت خارجه امریکا دیروز 12 شش 2023 در یک برنامه خاص از نهاد افغان ایواک سپاسگزاری و تشکری کرد در روند کار و فعالیتشان در بخش ماجرت و پناهندگی به خصوص افغان عزیز ما را که در مدت زمان همکاری کردند وزارت خارجه امریکا نه تنها سپاسگزاری و تشکری کرد در برنامه و قرارداد تازه را بایشان امضا کرد که افغانایی که فعلا واجد شرایط هستند در وطن هستند یا بیرون از وطن هستند در روند تخلیه و انتقالشان این هات فعلا رسمی تر شد کارشان قبلا هم بود با نو وان لف بیهاین کار میکردن و فعلا هم خودشان مستقیم قرارداد را امضا کردند که بتانند شما را مستقیم هم کمک کرده بتانند شما به دور آخر بیننده باشیم میریم گزارش هم میبینیم که رئیس افغان ایواک و وزیر خارجه امریکا در این مورد چی گفتنی داره And I am grateful to be here today to reaffirm that we will continue to do this vital work together Afghan evac was born when my buddy Lucky texted me from a mountaintop in Urgun, eight hours outside of Kabul. He told me that he was out of ammunition and believed he wasn't going to make it. He asked me to fulfill his final request and to get his wife and children out of Afghanistan and back to San Diego. I promised him that I would try, just as so many volunteers in this room and in this space were making similar promises at that same time. This effort continues nearly two years later because an unprecedented, diverse, cross-section of America stood up to help thousands of others. We've got everyone from veterans and frontline civilians to a children's book author, corporate executives, a member of Congress, and former senior U.S. government officials among our ranks. This is a shared experience of folks putting their lives on hold and pushing themselves to the limit. For people half a world away. This is the story of America, of immigration and diversity and people of different beliefs and backgrounds coming together with a common purpose and bridging divides, closing the gaps that exist between citizens and their government, between the U.S. and Afghanistan, closing the gap between an Afghan family escaping persecution and that family finding a safe home here in the U.S. or anywhere else in the world. Like Lucky, who against all odds made it out of Kabul, and with just a little bit of help, he and his family made it out. He's here with us today, and he exemplifies the story of the Afghan allies that we're working so hard to assist. Lucky lives in Texas now, and is the owner of Afghan markets there in, and in Oklahoma. He has applied for U.S. citizenship, and when he takes the oath to become a citizen, our country will be stronger and better for it. Um, first, it seems apparent that there's been a name change today. <laughs> And Sean's new first name is Kinetic. <laughs> we'll try to formalize that at the, with the appropriate authorities in the days ahead. But Mara, first of all, thank you uh, for uh, kicking us off. Thank you for sharing so much of the remarkable work that's been done. Uh, but especially thank you for helping to lead this effort uh, to fulfill the commitment that President Biden and I have made to Afghans who stood with us over so many years. Sean, Kinetic. Um, thank you for bringing us together today, but especially for your extraordinary leadership of the Afghan EVAC coalition. Now, um, virtually every one of us in this room, in some fashion or another, has been on the receiving end of Sean's tenacious advocacy. I mean, that's another possible first name, tenacious. Uh, but I can say this. Um, our Afghan partners are deeply, deeply fortunate to have you in their corner, and we're grateful to have Sean as a partner. To everyone else who's here, uh, members of Congress, including Representative Nunn, uh, leaders from across this department who've been playing key roles in this relocation effort, including our Ambassador to Qatar, Timmy Davis. <laughs> to the entire care team, to our Assistant Secretary for Consular Affairs, Rena Bitter, who's done remarkable work to John Bass, who has his heart and soul in this effort, uh, and so many other colleagues, uh, and especially, especially to our Afghan EVAC coalition volunteers joining us from around the country, some in this room today, some virtually. Now, as you heard from Sean, it's actually very fitting that we're meeting in this particular 
place, the National Museum of American Diplomacy. It honors the contributions of generations of diplomats and aid workers, locally employed staff, civil society partners throughout our history, including in Afghanistan. Um, there's actually a great seal emblem from the U.S. Consulate in Herat, a plaque remembering Ann Smittengoff, an extraordinary Foreign Service officer who gave her life while delivering books to a school in Zabul province, and a collection of the very books that she and her colleagues were delivering on that day. These items are a reminder not only of the contributions of our diplomats, but also, also of the courage and sacrifice of our service members over two decades in Afghanistan. Their professionalism was on extraordinary display during the evacuation when they put their lives on the line to help bring more than 120,000 people to safety, American citizens, Afghan partners, citizens of partner countries. Thirteen American heroes gave their lives in that operation. We honor them and all who served in Afghanistan for their truly extraordinary service. When President Biden brought an end to America's longest conflict, he made a commitment that the United States would continue to relocate and resettle our Afghan partners. We are determined, I am determined, to fulfill that pledge just as this group is. And together, that's what we're doing. What began as a 6.30 a.m. call between seven groups in August of 2021 has now evolved into a coalition of more than 200 groups, thousands of volunteers. Many of you are veterans. Catalina Gasper was deployed to Afghanistan from 2018 to 2019. She worked closely with Shams, a facility manager on her compound. And after Kabul fell, Catalina helped evacuate Shams and other SIV applicants. Shams, his wife, his two young children are now here with us in Virginia. He and Catalina still get together regularly to share a meal. Others in this coalition are Afghans drawn to serve their fellow Afghans. Samad served in Embassy Kabul from 2012 to 2014, where he helped coordinate development programs for USAID. He came to Arlington, Virginia as an SIV in 2014. In August 2021, he volunteered his dowry and pastry skills to help guide our Afghan partners to rendezvous sites in Kabul. Now, as a volunteer at the Afghan EVAC Coalition, he helps newly arrived Afghans by sharing his own experience and answering their questions about resettling in the United States. And many in the coalition are Americans who had never even set foot in Afghanistan. Teachers, humanitarian workers, firefighters, other citizens who wanted to help their fellow human beings in a time of need. Danielle Cosgrove, a former protection officer for the UN Refugee Agency, remotely helped eligible Afghans safely pass through the gates at Hamid Karzai International Airport and get onto planes that were heading to safety. For Catalina, for Samad, for Danielle, who are here with us today, for so many of you in this room, this wasn't a question of whether you would help, but how. You've risen to the challenge with incredible integrity and persistence at every step along the way. And quite honestly, it's your expertise, it's your ideas, it's your local networks that have made all the difference, that have been invaluable in this effort. And we've relied on this partnership for every step of the process. And we heard a little bit about what has been such an effective public-private partnership in this instance, maybe the most effective that, I, that I've seen. And a big part of that is our partners pushing us, prodding us, trying to not only break down institutional barriers, but to just break down walls in our own thinking, to make sure that we were testing every idea, every option to make this move better, to move faster, move forward more effectively. Thank you. Our diplomats worked around the clock with you to coordinate the initial evacuation. And our care team, strengthened by the Afghan EVAC Coalition members who chose to contribute their talents to the State Department full-time, Chuck, March, Jessica, has continued to 
partner with you to relocate and resettle our partners in the United States. And what this comes down to is to the extent that we've been effective, and I believe, as Sean does, that we have, uh, it's because we work together in common cause, in common enterprise, with community of purpose and community of action. And that really is a model for what public-private partnerships can be. So thanks to the leadership that we've seen, thanks to our state and local partners, thanks to the generosity of our fellow citizens, we've relocated more than 24,000 Afghans to the United States and third countries since September 2021. Overall, Overall, we have relocated more than 97,000 Afghans to the United States, Afghans who are going to school, who are starting new jobs, who are settling into their communities. And as Sean so rightly put it, the next generation of Americans, of our renewal, of our country, of our future. Most of us in this room are Americans by accident of birth. They are Americans by choice and they will be our future as well. <laughs> Finally, because this is so important, for all the success that we've had, as you've heard both of my colleagues say, this job is not yet done. The Memorandum of Understanding that we will shortly sign will allow us to keep sharing information with one another, to coordinate our outreach, to additional civil society partners to guide our ongoing efforts to find more and better ways to serve our Afghan partners, both those already here and those yet to come, and keep pace with their evolving needs. I think what inspires all of us is, you know, we talked about some of the, the numbers just a minute ago. They're impressive. But we know that behind each and every one of those numbers, is a real person, a real life, a real story, a mother, a father, a sister, a brother, a son, a daughter. And because of what you've done, because of what you're doing, those stories will continue. They won't be interrupted. And I hope at the very least that each and every one of you who's been involved will take that with you. Um, of all the things that one has the opportunity to do in life, um, few, few things are more meaningful, more powerful than the opportunity that we have to come to the assistance of our fellow human beings and to make a real difference in making sure that their stories continue, that their contributions continue. That's what you've done. That's what you're doing. That's what we're determined to keep doing until we finish the job. Sean, you described the Afghan Evac Coalition as, and I quote, the most American thing that I've been a part of. And looking out at all of you, I know exactly what you mean. You all show what America is when we're at our best. A compassionate country, full of big-hearted people from different backgrounds, different beliefs, but all ready to drop everything and work together work as one team to help other people, a country that honors its tradition of providing refuge to those who need it. As Secretary of State, but mostly as a fellow American, thank you. Thank you for your service. Mara, 